Hello, Andrew again, and what we have here is a two-digit analog shift register. Uh, pretty much what that means is the first input is stored in the left side here, and once it gets another input, the left is shifted to the right, and the new input is stored in the left. So, first button press is stored over on this side, and the second on this side. And I've got a keypad set up here, and the way this is, uh, 0 is on the top right, and 8 or 7 is on the bottom left. Uh, 0 actually shows up as a 1, just to have a difference between that and no input. So, uh, basically... Uh, the green part, dark green part here, is the keypad itself and the wiring involved in that. The light green part is a little circuit that lets you hit the buttons as fast as you want to, and it separates both inputs into two pulses. And the light blue part here is a pulse limiter and control circuit for these analog RS latches here, and the dark blue is the memory itself, the black is the output. Now it's quite simple to build this, uh, but the very base component is the memory cell here, and uh, all this is is two comparators pointing into blocks and dust behind them. So uh, the way this works is any time it receives an input, it remembers the strength of the input and will hold that until it's reset. So uh, if you haven't worked with comparators too much, uh, it's pretty much the same as a repeater, except uh, it keeps track of the signal strength and the side inputs have more functions. So, uh, what's happening here is the first comparator is powering the block here, and this powering the dust behind this one, which powers this block and just creates a loop. So, uh, the memory cell I'm using actually has two of these. And the second one is one, two, three, four, five blocks over. And it's actually mirrored. So, comparators pointing into the blocks, dust behind them, that's all there is. Okay. Now for the actual uh, shift register, it needs to have a path between the two. So, just have a little line of comparators going down the trench here. That's four comparators down here. The third one needs to be inverted with the torch from the front on. And on the side of it, a torch on the block. And dust going into the inverted comparator. Now, from there, it just needs to make sure that each comparator that has the dust going into the side has the front torch on. And build a little bridge using a slab over the torch so it doesn't power the block. And connect the two memory cells like so. This uh, just gives the, the memory in this cell to the next cell after it resets. That's why there has to be a delay between, otherwise it'll send a zero through. So, uh, from here, just need to put in the pulse limiter, which uh, you can use any pulse limiter you like. I just happen to like this comparator one because uh, it doesn't use any pistons, and it's pretty cheap, I'd say. So for this pulse limiter, you just have the block next to the dust here, a torch 
Ah, uh, the repeater going into it, some dust on the side, comparator, and a repeater on two ticks. Just put some dust going along the side here, connecting all the inputs together. And this right here needs to be a comparator for the input to the memory cell. So uh, this is the entire memory setup here. I think it's quite compact for what it does. And just to show that it does work, I'm going to run a line of dust along here. And uh, since it's remembering the signal strength, each input has to have a unique strength for you to see any difference. So uh, the first input goes to this memory cell. And to get the output from it, I'm just going to run the dust out of this block. Now I like to put lamps because it shows a little better than the dust itself. So I'm just going to grab some lamps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this can be used for more than eight, but uh, with the way I'm using it, I'd rather have used the eight and the wire length so that I don't have to have as many comparators between. So uh, the first torch I put down, put a six into this memory cell, and the next memory cell should have the same amount of lights after I hit the next input. So just run eight more torches down, no, lamps for the second memory's output. So uh, the first torch, I believe it was over here. So if I put another torch down right here, it's going to give me eight and six in the next one. So uh, if you don't believe it's working quite right, uh, it kind of helps to build as far out until you get it down to a 1 for the signal strength. That's a 2, so I need to go out one more. Okay. So as you can see, the 2 shifted to the back memory cell, and the 1 is in the front now. Okay, that's a basic setup, but if you want to actually use this thing, the keypad is a pretty handy setup I've got going on. So, for this to work, all you have to do is come over to the third block, put a comparator down, then alongside of it, have dust going off on the right, and the repeater coming in over here. And then uh, up two blocks, torch where the dust is going in, and dust on that, and this will lock the comparator, or stop it from sending a signal when this repeater is on. So uh, after that, just need the clock right here, and the repeater on four ticks here. So uh, all this does is uh, as soon as it gets an input, it turns this repeater off and also starts this clock. And this clock will go at the five ticks, uh, so one second clock, which is the same as the stone buttons. And that means that this will separate each button press into a unique pulse. So I just want to come over another three blocks here on top of the third dust. Go four blocks across for the keypad, get rid of the last two here. And then along the top, four more blocks and buttons on all of them. Now come around the back, four more blocks behind the bottom buttons and dust all along. Now the top row is supposed to be lower numbers than the bottom row, so I need to, to get a comparator in here in subtract mode with the torch on. 
and a hopper on the side to bring it down to the appropriate signal strength. And the way I did this just to avoid interference is a block up right here and then a block above it with the comparator into it. So for the actual signal strength to be where it should be, you need a hopper. You can do chests too, but hoppers require less items. And it needs two of the slots to be filled. That's 64 items in each, or an unstackable item such as a minecart. And that will subtract enough from the top row to make it the right signal strengths. So uh, that's the entire circuit. Uh, but just to show how it works, the top right button should be a signal strength of 1 and the bottom left a signal strength of 8. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, and just to have a difference between 0 and no input, I made it 1. So it's actually 1 to 8. So uh, when you hit the top right button, you get a signal strength of 1 on the front of the shift register. And if you hit another button, say 7, you get 7 in the front and the 1 moves back. You can hit the buttons as fast as you want, so right here I'm just going to hit, say, 5, 6, which is these two. 5, 6, hit them really quite fast. And the 5 went to the back, and the 6 came to the front. So. Uh, that's the nice thing about this little circuit. You don't have to wait between button presses at all. As long as you don't hit them at the same time, it'll work. Now, what I'm using this for is a grid of minecart stations in the nether, and each input stands for a coordinate in the grid. Uh, it's quite good for what I'm doing, because at each station in the grid, I need to have a comparison on if the destination is above or below where you are right now. So the analog actually helps a lot with that. Uh, I'm quite sure there are more uses for this. And if you have any ideas, I'd, I'd love to see them. But as far as I know, this is as good as it's going to get for what I'm doing. Because uh, uh, if you can see from my older station design, with the digital memory, it got a little messy here, so it's quite nice to see it get down to something like this. Well, that's all there is to it here, but uh, if you don't like the numbers going from right to left, all you have to do is mirror the entire thing or flip the keypad so that your inputs are on this side. And of course you're going to have to move the hopper and comparator to the other side, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. So, just to show really quick, you can have the keypad with any set of numbers as you want, as long as each one is different. Just dust along the same way. Comparator here, into the block and the hopper on the side here with two of the slots full. And now the numbers on the keypad will run one, two, three, four on the top, five, six, seven, eight on the bottom. Now I would have done this originally but I was just throwing it together to test this and it doesn't really bother me that much. But Top left will be a 1, if I put this in subtract mode, that is. And bottom right will be 8. So, hope this helps in some way, and 
looking forward to getting some feedback on this.